2 Timothy chapter 2. I've been thinking about you loved ones. I really have. I've been, I've been taking you to the throne. I've been dropping you off up there at the feet of Jesus and asking God for some help that I can help you. And I believe maybe, maybe tonight we'd get a little more help. We've been getting some help, I believe. But we'll get a little more help tonight, I think, that uh, maybe something will uh, strike a receptive chord in your life, in your heart, in your mind. Uh, what God and I want to do tonight is have a dedication service. So turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. If you're kind enough to stand, I'm going to read you these three verses, and then we're going to see what God has to say. How about that? It's 25 to 8. Does that mean anything? Good. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and of some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man, notice the condition here, if a man. You do know everything that God does is conditional, don't you? If you repent, you'll get saved. If you don't repent, you won't get saved. Right? Come on, say with me now. All kinds of stuff in that Bible is conditional upon our response to God. We can respond or not respond. Ain't that right? Yeah. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Notice the little thing in front of vessel. He shall be a vessel, not the vessel. None of us are the. All of us are a. We're all part of the big family of God Almighty. A vessel under honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Brother, Brother James prayed, you men prayed, you may be seated. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank God for you. You've entered in, now you're about a year into a great transition. Last year when we was here, Preacher carried us over there and showed us that piece of land. We prayed over that ground. Nothing was settled a year ago. Ain't that right? But it was started. Okay? Just before I got here this year, let's get it. So the transition's already started. Now there's no telling. There's no telling when you finally... Uh, get over there and, and get everything together and the parking lot's big enough for people to stop by and come to church, there's no telling how many doubles this church can be. Now they drive by now and they see the parking lot full and they say, ain't no place to park. But over there, they ain't going to have that excuse. Right? They got a lot of room over there to park. Amen. So the transition started already and there needs to be, uh, I want to say, uh, some people, you especially, because you're going to be, you're going to be the foundation people of uh, the work in the other property. You're the you're the original cast, if you will, of the whole deal, and you're going to be the example setters of what the new folks are supposed to live like and act like and be like as members of this great church. You're the ones that's going to set that example of how it ought to be. The preacher's trying to get you to understand that for even Saturday. He said, preacher, uh, what are you trying to tell me? I'm just trying to tell you something right now. Remember, you're God's child out there. Okay? And you've got to, you've got to act accordingly no matter, no matter who's around you, what they do, uh, what they say, what they look like, how they act. I mean, it's a fourth of, or not fourth of, it's a Memorial Day parade, right? right. And, and, all parades for the heathen simply mean a chance to get drunk and not work. That's what most holidays mean to the lost and the dying. But that ain't what it means for you. 
And so I was thinking about all this stuff today, and I was sitting there this morning, and I was asking God, flat out asking God. I said, God, I don't know what to preach tonight exactly. And he said, uh, well, sit down there a minute after you read your Bible. And I, I finished my Bible reading, and, and uh, Mom and I had our devotions and our prayer time, and I sat back down in my lazy boy recliner, and uh, I sat there and opened my Bible. And God Almighty said, uh, uh, in a great house are not any vessels of. And I said, well, God, I've been looking at that for a week or better now. And so, uh, you know, what's the story? He said, well, I want you to realize something. Uh, these vessels that I'm talking about are dedicated vessels. Set apart. Consecrated. Uh, fit for the master's use. Have a purpose. Devoted to the divine being. That's what dedicated speaks of. So I was thinking about that and he was talking to me about that. And he said, let me show you a couple of instances of that and then we'll get to today's world. Go with me, if you will, love, to Exodus 24. Exodus 24. And again, in this great church, there ain't nothing I can preach that you don't already know. But... We're going to try our best to give you something and remind you and help you with it, all right? Exodus 24, here, my dear family, is a very important story. God Almighty and the children of Israel have done come out of Egypt, have they not? All right? They've separated from the world, all right? That's a principle you need to get your mind on. They have separated from the world, Egypt type of picture of the world, Exodus 24, 1, Lord, he said unto Moses, come up, unto the, come up unto the Lord thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the seventy elders of Israel and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told all the people the words of the Lord and all the judgments. In verse 4, Moses wrote all the words of the Lord Rose up in the morning. Moses, in verse 6, took half the blood, put on the basins, half the blood, sprinkled on the altar. Moses took the blood, in verse 8, sprinkled on the people. Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made you concerning all these words. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the seven elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. Now, can you imagine that scene? They saw the God of Israel. What an amazing thing. Verse 12, the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me in the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. Moses went up into the mount of God. 15 says, Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount. Now we got Moses all the way up with God and we got Joshua part way up with God. And we find Moses there in verse 16, six days waiting on God. Sitting on a mountain. He's not picnicking. He's not sightseeing. He is sitting there, no food, no water, all by himself, waiting on God. You and I need to learn that that God does not have to answer us the second we ask Him. We need to learn how to wait on the Lord. In our transition, and I'm adding myself to you because I'm in your mission family. I'm adding myself to you. We must learn to wait on God. There is no way under the sun every single thing is going to run smoothly and without a hitch. Are you listening to me? One of the things that you need to be aware of is the fatigue that's going to mess your strength up and your attitude. The longer we work, I'm adding myself to you because I'm going to be praying while I'm running the road. I'm going to be praying. While we're running this thing up and we're building this thing and we're mowing the yard, by the way, which one of you men's going to mow the yard? 
Okay. All right, preacher, you don't have to mow the yard. Okay? He ain't mowing the yard. Got that? You men raise your hand. It's your job. You get her done every week. You get that yard mowed, okay? And don't fight over who's mowed it. Just get out there and get on the mower and get it done. All right? Hallelujah. But the fatigue factor in this transition is going to be astronomical. And you know as well as I, the tired you are, the crabbier you are. The tired you are, the less you agree with one another. Amen. I'm going to give you a rule. Can I give you a rule? The second strife starts to arise in your heart. Stop whatever you're doing and get on your face and wait on God to take that out of you before you go back to work. If He don't take it out of you all day, say, preacher, I love you, but I've got to go home. And you go home. And you don't come back until you get your heart right. Amen. With God. See why, preacher? Because we can't get her done unless Nehemiah chapter 3, next unto him, and next unto him, and next unto them, and next unto him, and next unto them, and next unto them. Everybody in Nehemiah's day was in their place on the wall, building the wall, building the doors, building the gates, whatever, and every one of you have to be in your place doing your part of this great transition and you've got to do it while you wait on the Lord. Amen. Stay with me now. Stay with me tonight. Please stay with me tonight. Moses is on the mountain. He's waiting on God. Chapter 25. The Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Now remember, we're having a dedication service tonight. Okay, keep that in your mind. Bring me an offering, God says, of every man that giveth willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. Willing-hearted offering. God loves a cheerful giver. So preacher, do I have to give? No. No, you don't. You'd be wise if you did, but you don't have to. God Almighty knew that in that multitude of people there, that when the offering time came of whatever it was, and look down through there, this is the offering you'll take. <coughs> Gold, silver, brass, blue, purple, scarlet, skins, I mean all that stuff. There'd be some there that was not going to give it willingly. God Almighty said, I want you to take of every man the offering that gives it willingly. Why? Because what that guy's are doing, he said, listen, I'm dedicating this piece of gold to this project. I'm dedicating this hunk of purple to this project. I'm dedicating these ram skins dyed red to this project. I'm consecrating my gift to this project. I'm taking my hands off of it when I lay it down there. It's God's. I ain't putting on I ain't telling what you do with it. I ain't telling you how to work with it. All I'm saying is this. This is what I give because I love God. Here, Lord, this is what you get from me. And he do it willingly. Look at, verse, look at verse 9, 8 and 9. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even shall you make it. So God is explaining to Moses how to do what needs to be done. And that's exactly what God Almighty is going to do to you. He's going to show you exactly how it's supposed to be. How He wants it. Now there may be some tweaks and changes. There might be some adjustments. There might be some of this and some of that. But don't get all fussed up if it was not what you wanted. Yeah. All right? You say, well, preacher, I, 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 give, I give an idea. And all I, listen to me, listen to me, look at me, look at me, look at me. All ideas and all suggestions are welcome. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. We'll write it down. We'll discuss it in group. We'll look at this, the pros and cons of all ideas and suggestions. But if it's your opinion that this is how it ought to be or I ain't helping no more, keep it. Amen. We ain't got time in this transition for selfish hearts. This is not Brother Fenton's work. This is not your 
work. This is God Almighty's work. And God is improving this great church by giving us land and the new building and whatever, whatever the good Lord's going to do. He's improving His work. Amen. And you're saved by the grace of God. You belong to Jesus Christ. You're part of this great work. Amen. And we want you involved in it. But you're not the boss of it. But preacher, I think we ought to do it this way. Well, we'll take that into consideration. No, I want it this way. Sorry. You say, preacher, does that happen? In every building project, it does. You say, preacher, why? Because people are people. And what they do is this. They don't dedicate what they give. They got this dumb idea that they're loaning this to the church. And if it don't go their way, they'll take it back. Well, you won't take back the parking lot. You're not taking back your part of the roof. You ain't taking back your toilet. So what you dedicate to this work is God's. You take your hands off of it. You give it to God Almighty. Lord, this is for sacred use. This is to win Seneca Falls, New York to you, Lord. We want a bigger facility to get more people to hear the gospel. And so, God, this is your project, your people, your money, your will. Here we are, God. And you dedicate it to Him as His work. God Almighty tells Moses how to build the tabernacle. He gives them the intricate details of every bit of it. The altar and, and, and the walls uh, and the posts uh, and the gold and all the different things uh, that comes to pass in this thing. I want you to slip up real quick down to chapter 31 with me. I want you to see this couple things and we'll be done. Here's what God Almighty says in chapter 31. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the son of tribe of Judah, tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God and wisdom and understanding and knowledge and all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works. God gave Moses a foreman. Someone who could be the under boss of God Almighty. Moses is there, the leader. But Moses, do you know how old he is right now? He's not a spring chicken. He's an older man. He can't physically do the work that it takes in this tabernacle project. So God Almighty gives him a foreman, and the foreman gathers the helpers. The foreman is dedicated to do what needs to be done according to the chain of command. Is anybody listening? I'm talking about dedication. The foreman's not making decisions. He's following orders. This is what we're going to make it out of. This is how it's going to be made. And if you take a look, my dear family, down there about verse 7 and following, I'll read this quickly. We'll move on to the second thought. The tabernacle of the congregation, the ark of the testimony, the mercy seat that is there upon, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table, and the furniture, and the pure candlestick with all the furniture, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all of its furniture, and the labor, and its foot, and the cloth for service, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, the garments of his sons, to minister in the priest's office, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded thee shall they do. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now this is close. This is close. Here it comes. Ready? Here it comes. Stay with me now. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths, shall you keep. It is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you, set you apart for sacred service. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Y'all be glad you ain't living then. 
for whosoever doth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done. But in the seventh of the Sabbath, the rest, holy to the Lord. Some of you need to learn that. Whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. What's he saying? Not only do we have things dedicated, but we have a day dedicated. Amen. The Lord's day. Amen. Some of you need to learn that. You know what this tabernacle was for Israel? It was a center of their living. You know what this great church should be? The absolute center of your living. Amen. Everything you do, all right, we're all going to hover around, around this church. All your schedules ought to be dealt with on, is there anything going on at the church? Amen. If there's a no, have at it. If there ain't nothing going on down here, go to the ball game. Ain't nothing going on down here, hold the garden. Ain't nothing going on down here, wash the car. Ain't nothing going on down here, mow the yard. Whatever you want to do. But all of it hinges around here. Preacher, what's on the calendar this week? Well, just Wednesday night service. Okay, good. Well, Wednesday night's checked off. There ain't nothing else to do. We're going to church on Wednesday. You got Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, do what you want. See, that tabernacle was the center of their lives. Are you hearing me? The dedicated things inside of it. The ark of the testimony represents the presence of God. The mercy seat represents the forgiveness of God. The furniture of the tabernacle, my dear family. The table and its furniture that represents the life sustaining of God. The pure candlestick with all of his furniture represents the light for the path for God. The incense represented the prayer of God for God, to God. The burnt offering represented the total sacrifice that was being made. The labors for the cleansing. The coverings for the clothing. The oil was to sanctify to God. And the incense was the pleasing of God with the prayers of his people. All of Israel's life surrounded that tabernacle. And Moses told the people, I want it dedicated. I just don't want it built. I want it dedicated. I want you to, in your mind and in your heart, in your spirit, in your being, I want you to understand the principle, this is God's tabernacle where God's going to meet with us and it's the center of our lives and I want your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your faith, your everything to be dedicated to this work. And they did it. And they built that tabernacle. I want you to look with me please over yonder, verse 18. He gave unto Moses when he had made the end of the community with him on Mount Sinai, two tables of the testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Dedicated. You're in a great transition church. But what we need to do is get ourselves dedicated to it. We need to make up our minds. This is going to be the absolute center of my family. The absolute center of my ways and my, my decisions and, and the different things. Not that I got to ask the preacher permission to do anything. He's not a dictator. He's not your daddy. Some of you, he ain't your daddy. <laughs> but the center of your entire life ought to be God Almighty. And the head of the church is Jesus Christ himself, your very Savior. So why shouldn't he be the absolute preeminent one in your life? Right. Some folks have a lot of other things going on, and I understand all of that. We've got to live so-called in this world somewhat. But, but I'm telling you right now, dear family, we need, we need to get back to that time where these dedicated vessels that we have that belong to God Almighty, we were given to them by, were given to us by God Almighty. We didn't, we didn't earn this. We didn't create this. We didn't invent this. Uh, all that we have has been given to us. Why not give it back? Why not just dedicate it back to it and say, God, this is yours. 
Then what I want to do, Lord, is I want to sanctify myself. I want to give myself. Go with me to 1 Kings 6. Nothing new under the sun, my family. Nothing new under the sun. I want you to see some things here in 1 Kings 6. We find a man named David. He was a great man. A man after God's own heart. A man that loved the Lord. Ain't that true? A man that wanted nothing more than to please God. And the Bible says the only thing he messed up with was the matter of Uriah the Hittite. He died of a good old age full of honor and riches. He was a great king in the land of Israel. He was so great that Christ himself could have sat on his throne during a thousand year reign in Israel. He said, preacher, uh, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you, David wanted to build something for God, but he, he wasn't allowed to do it. You know the story. He said, I'll let your boy do it though. And so what David did was he, he dedicated the temple to be built for God. But he didn't put it together. He stacked it up in the backyard. Come on. Everything Solomon had to have was in the backyard. David set it up. You and I have some things that we want for God Almighty and we'll not live long enough to see it accomplished. So we're going to have to set it up in the backyard for those coming up behind us. We're going to have to create something. Are you listening to me close? We're going to have to create something that this young man right here is going to pick up on when we're gone and carry it on for us. For God Almighty. We're going to have to lay something on the side, something on the, on the side that these young ladies right here are going to pick up when they become adults. When we're gone, they're going to be the ladies of the church. He's going to be the man of God in the church. And we've got to lay something back. We're going to dedicate some things over here in the new building that they will just carry on so that we do not die out when we die out. That's what David did. David wanted to build that temple. God Almighty said, no, you can't do it, son. But I'll let your boy do it. Paraphrase it for the sake of time. 1 Kings 6, 1, it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel. In the month Ziph, which is the second month, he began to build the house of the Lord. He began to build. Four years as king, he finally begins to build. All that stuff laid out back for four years. He never touched it. You say, preacher, what, what, what was going on? Well, we, we find ourselves looking at, at this, and we, we ain't going to read all of this for sake of time, but look at verse 11. The word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments, will keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word which, uh, with thee, which I spake unto David thy father. You're going to get a temple built, Solomon, but you're going to have to be obedient to do it. We need to dedicate our obedience to get the new Seneca Bible Baptist Church built. Now, some of you have got a problem with it. You're unfaithful as a dog. You hear me? You're unfaithful. You need to stop that. Come on, you ought not treat Jesus like that. You need to be here. Every service you possibly can, you need to be here. Why? Because you're part of our great work. You're part of our family. We love you. We, you're our brother. You're our sister. You're part of our great family. Amen. And we need every one of you in this work. We need to see you. Every service we possibly can. There are those that can't. Understand. There are things come up. Understand. There's sickness that shows up. Understand. There's work things. I understand. But let me try to tell you something. The time that there's none of that, you ought to be here. Amen. Dedicating your faithfulness. God Almighty was going to bless the faithfulness of Solomon. He said in 13, I'll dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built a house and finished it. Now if you look over in chapter 6 at the end verse, the end two verses, in the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the Lord laid. In the month Ziph, that's when it started. And in the 11th year, in the month Bull, 
which is the eighth month, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof according to all the fashion of it. So was he seven years in building it. Now, listen to me close. They didn't have the cranes and all the stuff that you and I are going to have. But they had the heart. You need to dedicate your heart. You just say, God, I don't care how hard the work is. Every spare moment that I have, God, I, I, I want to take, not, stay with me now, stay with me now, not to the neglect of your family, Amen. but every spare moment you could have. I, I'm, where are you going? I'm going down to the property. I'm going to go down there and see if I can do a little something, whatever I, I could do. I'm going, to try, I'm going to try to be a help. I'm going to try to do a little something down there. It may not be anything but just be an encouragement. Amen. Just, to, just to pull up in the parking lot, honk the horn, and smile, say, praise God. Amen. Boy, you guys are doing all that heavy work. I can't do that anymore. My guts are bad. I can't lift. And so, but I'm here to egg you on. Amen. Yeah, just to encourage. Because it's going to be hard and hot and miserable. And folks are going to get tired and crabby. They're going to not feel good and then go down there and start doing whatever they're going to do down there and they're going to get on each other's nerves. And all the Indians may all turn into chiefs and, and the chiefs will be at war with each tribe. And when that starts, the whole shebang needs to stop and get on their face before God. And you listen to me, you can't fight when you're praying together. Amen. And you keep praying until you quit fighting. So preacher, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you this is a dedication thing. This is going to take, this is going to take true dedication. Now, the blessed part about our transition versus Solomon's deal is he took seven years and we ain't going to take that long. Now, I'm telling you flat out, I'm planning on living long enough to preach a revival meeting in that new building. Amen. You got that? Amen. So don't just keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off so I stay alive. You get her, you get her done, you get her done as long, quick as you can get her done properly. Amen. And then I look forward to the moment when we get to come up and spend a week or two or whatever and preach in that new building. I got me a new one going on over in North Tonawanda. David Constantino, they bought a new property, completely remodeled it, and this will be my first year in their new building. Amen. I'm looking so forward to it. It's going to be so fun. But you said, Preacher, what we got to do? His people did most of the work, and it saved him thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, if, if, a, if a congregation does not have the skills inside of it to do certain things, then we, you know, we hire it done. Ain't that right? Okay, so we just passed the plate. It's just listen, I need an extra 10000 today. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Let me ask you something. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Is that an expense or an investment? Amen. See, if you look at it right, well, you have it. I don't have 10,000. That don't matter. That don't matter. You got 10? So, preacher, what good's $10 going to do? It's going to go to the dollar store and buy a bunch of cold water so the workers can get a drink of water. You don't know how important every single bit of this is. And if you dedicate that measly 10 bucks, and it helps somebody there, some hired somebody there, have a drink of cool water during a hot day of work. It'll be a blessing. Your investment will come back to you many, many times over. God's people, listen to me closely. This is an insane thought, but it's a fact. God's people never spend. We invest. You have a preacher, every time I invest, I end up flat broke. No, you don't. It's like last night. Does anybody remember last night's message? Huh? Deflated? <clears throat> Let me ask you something. How many times in your life have you been deflated? And how many times has God Almighty inflated you after that? 
How many times have you been without money? And how many times after that, God Almighty got you some more money? Every dime we get comes from God Almighty anyhow. All of it belongs to Him anyways. Amen. All you got to do is go back to Him and say, Dear God, we need another $5,000. God said, I've got it. He said, where are we going to get 5000 preacher? God's got it. He'll touch somebody's heart and say, Listen, I want you to give some money. How much? And He'll tell you how much. Now, we don't have to broadcast it. We don't have to make sure everybody knows who gave that five. No, 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 no. We just give it incognito. And we say, Lord Jesus, this is dedicated to you. I don't want credit for it. I don't want nothing for it. I just want you to know I love you. Here, God, you asked for five. I've got you five. Here it is, God. And just give it to God. And if nobody else ever finds out about it, you're going to be blessed. You know why? Because you ain't storing up your rewards down here. You're putting all your rewards on the on side. Over there where it counts. Over there where the rust don't get it. Over there where the moth don't get it. Over there where the devil don't get it. You put it up in heaven. And God Almighty will bless you. I'm talking about a dedicated person. God Almighty had a dedication going on here to build a house. Solomon built 13 years of his own house. Go with me please if you will up to chapter 8. Look up at chapter 8 with me, please. God Almighty sent Bezalel to help Moses. But I want you to realize something, dear family. There was a man that, that Solomon needed. Let me see if I can find the verse for it. Let me back up, back up, back up, find the verse. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 7, verse 13. King Solomon sat and, sat and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. Verse 14 says he was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a man in brass. He was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought, worked all of his work. Hiram. Now go to chapter 8. Hiram. Moses had Bezalel. Solomon had Hiram. The foreman. The trail driver, the man who understood how to work this, that, and the other, and he got his understanding from God Almighty. None of us have skills we got on our own. I don't care how much school you've had. If it wasn't for God Almighty, you wouldn't know it today. Amen. And God brought old Bissalil, and God brought old Hiram over there, and I want to grab it up if I may, over there in the 63rd verse of 1 Kings 8. Here's what happens. Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings which he had offered unto the Lord. Two and twenty thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. So Percher, what are you, what are you trying to tell me? Does any of you know anything about chapter 8? It's the great thank you Lord prayer of Solomon. They built a scaffold. He got down on his knees in that, on that scaffold in front of the people, raised both hands up to God, and he prayed in 1 Kings chapter 8 the great thank you Jesus prayer because of that tabernacle. I'm telling you, or the, or the building, the, 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 the temple. I want you to realize something, my dear family. There's going to be times in your life, and we're not going to wait until we have a dedication service. But I want y'all, and I'm going to help you do it because I'm going to pray, that just all the time you just stop right in the middle of a project and say, God, we just want to thank you that we're thus far. We just want to thank you, God, that you've provided this. You know what we need, Father, for tomorrow and for next week and next month and all that. But God of heaven, we just want to stop right now and give thee thanks. You know, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You do know that's in the Bible, don't you? In everything, give that God, I'm thinking we're this far. I do a travel up and down the highway. We'll, we'll take off on a journey. Like, like Listen, we, we, we come from Key West, Florida, all the way up here, amen? And periodically, as I'm going through town, I pray for the preachers that are in them towns. Even if I don't know who they are, I pray for them. That God will bless them and help them and build their work. And we'll stop and fuel up and, and you know, after a while, and, and, and I'll thank God. I said, Lord, thank you for safety thus far. You've answered prayer. I ask you to give us traveling grace. We've got this far, God. We ain't had a flat. We ain't had a rick. Lord, I sure appreciate it. Can it go a little further? Yeah. Now, 
pull her down indeed and take all the gear. They may say, preacher, I, I want you during the during the process of this, I want you just to stop every once in a while. <coughs> and it don't have to be the man of God, all right? It could be any of you men of God that say, listen, let's just stop and pray a minute. Amen. You don't have to spend an hour or two out in the hot sun. Just stop and pray and thank God for what he's doing. Amen. I'm going to pray you get it done before Jesus comes. Now, he's coming any second now. And we ain't out nothing if he comes and we don't get it done. But won't it be something? Won't it be a testimony of the grace of God out there on that highway, looking over that great mode field and parking lot and the buildings? And Seneca Falls says, Whoo! Man, their God must be something. Look what they got. And then when we sell all of this and pay for it, they're really going to think we're something. And we'll praise God for that. Amen. And we'll thank God for how He's blessed and how He's helped. But I want you to know something, Ryan. We need some dedicated soldiers in this army. I want to go to our side now. Ready? Can we go to our side? That was all Moses and Solomon. Let's go to our side. Run with me up to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want to show you the reason to dedicate yourself tonight here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. This is what God's Bible says to you and I. Here's what he says. Verse 31 and following. Whether you eat, whether therefore you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do all the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 3 says, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Listen to what it says here. I'll get to it myself here in just a second. Colossians chapter 3, look at verse 17. God's Bible says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. Is that in your Bible? Amen. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. This is what God's Bible says to you and I. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. How can I do that, preacher? There's things that I don't agree with. There's going to be things you don't agree with. There's things you don't agree with in your home. There's things you don't agree with with your spouse. There's things you don't agree with with your children. Come on, children. There's things you don't agree with mom and dad. But do all things without disputings and without murmurings. Why? Because, my dear family, this entire transition, this entire transition... It's for God. Do you see this? This is a dedicated vessel in the house of God. Is that right? Yeah. We're not going to let, I'm telling my age now, we're not going to let Jerry Lee Lewis or Liberace come play this piano. It is sacred unto God. God, ain't that right? Come on now, come on now. See this pulp right here? Sacred vessel. Sacred ground. That's why it's so scary up here. And it is scary. If you don't understand that, you, you try it sometime. The right message on the right night, in the right attitude, with the right motive. Oh, Lord, help me. Sacred. We're not going to let 
The little fellow in Rome come over here and address and speak behind his pulpit. No. See this plan over here? We're not letting the world come in here and play their stuff. No. This is a sacred vessel. This equipment, this stuff, the, the different things, the different vessels, if you will, that you and I relish as it's God's. It belongs to God. It, it's not, nobody else's but God's. And God lends it. He lets us use it. Yeah. I classify my camper and that truck out there. That's God's equipment. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to let some Tom, Dick, and Harry drive my truck around. That's, right. That's God's truck. Many a time in the years gone by when I break down, they, they say, well, this is what's going to be, this is what's going to be. And I said, listen, you need to be good because that's God's truck. You're fixing God's truck. I had two mechanics at $100 plus dollars an hour work for eight hours on a truck one time. And when I got the bill, they said, you got $300? I said, sure as you're living. I ran out the trailer. I said, Mama, please hurry. Give me 300 bucks." I went in there and put it in. He stamped the paid in full, signed his name. I said, do it again. He stamped the paid in full, signed his name. I said, do it one more time. He stamped the paid in full, signed his name. He said, why'd you do that? I said, because I want God to bless you. Two men at 100 bucks an hour, eight hours, that's... Huh? That was the labor. Don't count parts. Tearing the transmission out. Putting the transmission back. Putting everything together. Test driving it, bringing it back. 300 bucks. Come on, gang. Why? Because this equipment of mine is not mine. It's his equipment. I dedicated it to God. I gave it to God. All right, now here we come. You ready? Here we come. I'm done. I'm done. Five more minutes. I'm done. You got time? You've already got this. A dedicated pastor. This transition you're going through, you're under shepherd. Is doing everything in his power to hear the Holy Ghost on what to do, how to do, when to do, who's to do, how we're going to do this, where's this going to happen. He's trying his dead level best to hear what God Almighty wants as God builds his tabernacle and God builds his temple. Because that's what that church is going to be. It's going to be God's. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. Dedicated. Separate for sacred use. He could turn into a howling, build it out there, make a name for himself, and, and uh, turn it crazy. A lot of churches are doing that now. Amen. Turning crazy. You ever drove by Erie lately? You see that monster on I 90 at Erie? That crowd went completely haywire. It's a mega, mega, mega church. He could do that. All you got to do is think about the money. The little smiling jack down in Houston, Texas. He bought a, he bought a stadium. Put 50,000 people in there. What are you saying? Anybody could do that kind of stuff if they dedicated to God. You got a dedicated man of God in your house. But he has to have some dedicated people. Because he can't do it himself. I thank God for you men that said you're going to mow the yard. I thank God for you. Now, I don't know what else we're going to have to do. I don't know what other work has to be done. But I'm telling you right now, have you ever read the Bible what he's supposed to do? Huh? Study, pray, preach. Huh? Now, he's an active fellow, so he's going to be out there helping too. But I'm telling you flat out right now, men, we need some dedicated men. We need some dedicated ladies. And if all you can do is watch your babies like poor Miss Elizabeth is doing tonight. Listen, there's a special reward for nursery workers when I'm preaching. I want you to know that, all right? Bless your hearts. Dedicated people. You youngins. You know what you need to learn how to do? Give yourself wholly unto the Lord like Caleb did. Just give yourself to God. Ain't that right, Maddie? Just give yourself to God. Lock, stock, and barrel. God, I'm yours. 
When it's your want me to do, you tell me. When you want me to go, you tell me. When you want me to spend it, you tell me. God in heaven, I'm yours. You give yourself to God Almighty. Dedicate yourself to God. Number three. Ready? Oh, God, uh, help me. We need some dedicated parents. Mom and Dad, does your kids drive? Can your kids get to the house of God and the ways of God and the things of God on their own? Or do you have to bring them? Do you know if they have no way to get here and it ain't the church van's responsibility to pick them up. We need some dedicated parents to make up their mind. I'm going to dedicate not only myself, but I'm going to dedicate my kids by having them in every service I possibly can, every time I possibly can, because I want my children not only to come to heaven when it's time, but I want them to be good Christian people when they grow up. But it takes a dedicated parent to do that. You're going to have to sacrifice some things. You're going to have to learn to tell a kid no, which is some of the hardest thing in the world for somebody to do. You can't tell your kid no. I don't know why. It's easy. Mommy, can I do that? No. I mean, what's hard about that? Mommy, can I go there? No. Daddy, what do you think about me going there? No. Daddy, what do you think about me wearing that? No. How come, how come they're still doing that? Well, they came to me and, and I asked me, and I didn't think there was nothing wrong with it, so I let them go do that. And when mom and dad are not in unison... Them kids know. Amen. Ah, daddy won't do it, but mama will. And a mama, there was a t-shirt one time I seen on somebody, a little fella about that big. You know what it said? If mama says no, ask grandma. I bet that kid's destroyed today. We need some dedicated parents. See, parents, let me ask you something. When you just dedicate yourself and not your children, you're going to damage them. You must dedicate your children to God. Son, daughter, this is how we live for Jesus. We're going to do, we're going to go, we're going to have some time. I promise you that. But the priority of our life is Christ. The center of our life is the church. The ways of our life is God. Our main Bible, book in the Bible is the Bible. The, the main songs we sing are going to be gospel music. We're, we're, children, I want you to understand something. This is for your own good. It's your preacher. I don't, I don't think I can do that. You do it at the table. Eat. Well, I don't like that. Here's what some of you do. Okay, honey, but what do you want to eat? I want a piece of candy, and I want a hot dog. Well, we're not having hot dogs and candy. What we're having is this green stuff, and you're going to eat it. Not in this day and age. In my day and age. <laughs> they put on a plate for me. And if they hit the plate, I ate it. Or else. Not today. Today we throw the food in the garbage can and go to the Dairy Queen. Burger King. McDonald's. Get all that heart-stopping food. Family, we need some dedicated parents. Some of us old folk are going to die off. Who's going to be in the new church when we get to go home to be with our God Who's going to be in the church if we don't dedicate ourselves to the raising of these kids? What do you think? 
we have a dedication service tonight? Could we have a dedication service tonight? We ain't even over at that building yet. We ain't even over that property yet. But I wonder if we could start tonight and have a dedication service. Mama, get your song, baby. I wonder if we could have a dedication service. I wonder if we could, in our hearts and minds, make up our minds, God, I'm coming to you for thy will to be done. So I'm giving myself to you for that purpose. Whatever you want, God, is what I want. From this moment on, I'm going to endeavor by the grace of God, by the power of God, as you allow me, Lord. I'm going to give everything I've got to everything you want. And I give myself to you for that thing. I want a dedication service tonight. Some are coming. Would you come? Would you come and give yourself tonight? Dedicate your life to God Almighty. Be a dedicated vessel. Parents, maybe you need to come and dedicate yourself to raise your babies in the house of God faithfully. Men, I'm dedicating myself, God, whatever work needs to be done, I want to be a part of it. Ladies, God, I need to dedicate myself to thy will and thy way for my life. You young people, God, I give myself to you, dedicate myself, God. You find me my spouse. You find me the future. You show me what to do, God. Dedicate. Dedicated vessel.